Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello there. Welcome to episode 235 of Wise Advice. I just got done hanging out with you guys on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I spent about 40 minutes or so just kind of catching up, just in a hanging out kind of show. And then I told you I had a pre-recorded episode, which I'm going to play for you in just a little bit. But I want to kind of give an introduction to those of you joining us on the podcast side. Uh, I'm going to spend, I got got the episode already pre-recorded, but I'm going to introduce it to you here. Before I get into that, I want to kind of give you a couple things. Uh, This time of year, here we are recording this December 10th. Uh, the comments I'm seeing all over social media is, is there's this complacency mode. There's we're kind of stuck in this in this um, kind of mid-holiday seasonal slump, and and a lot of us know that when January comes, we're we're back on fire, we're back energized. But there's this period of time where we're somewhere in the middle of December that things just kind of taper off, and we kind of get put into a holding pattern until such a time uh, where we're ready to to revamp. And, and I want to take the next uh, the end of the year and just really use this time to to share those stories with you. I want to know I want to know where you're at. I want to know I want to know how your December is going. I want to know where you're struggling. I want to know how you're beating complacency. Where you're at. And so so go ahead and email in on air at fatdag.com. We'll end the year with with your stories of complacency on beating it on how what your game plan is, what your strategy as you go through the last year of 2018, your best year ever, rolling into 2019, I got a lot of exciting news to share. The 2019 International Tour, I'm starting to book dates. Uh, we've confirmed Houston. We've confirmed Seattle. Uh, looking at uh, confirming Minneapolis next. That kind of looks like the, the third. Then we're going to kind of roll in. I got a different strategy for you this time. We're going to certainly continue with the same theme of doing the 5K like we did earlier in 2018. But this time I want to add a little bit of a component to it. I want to add a workshop. I want to add a, you know, a, a two-hour session where we just sit down together and we pour our hearts out and, and we dig into our why and we really understand what it is that's getting us. And so if you're interested in that, those details will certainly be released as we roll through 2019, but I'll probably release them to the Patreon community first. So if you're not a member of Patreon, please go ahead and get in there uh, for as little as a buck a month. You can get in there, go to fatdag.com, click on the Become a Patron link, join the Patreon community uh, to be the first one to know exactly what's going to happen in 2019 as I roll out the entire plan. So without further ado, I want to introduce this episode. This is, uh, you remember, part of the 2018 tour. I went off to Washington, D.C. to speak to the Food Nutrition Conference and Expo. I had had a room of about 500 dietitians, many of them military dietitians as well, and I had an opportunity to present my story. And uh, I've shared it with you multiple times, but I I actually had got my hands on the actual recording from that exact episode, so you can see exactly how it was delivered uh, and listen in. So I want to play that for you, and I want you to kind of kind of just soak it all in. And if you're in the military currently and you're struggling with your fitness and and you need and this story resonates with you. Let me help you. Go to operationfatdag.org. Check out that link. Check out that website and uh, and join that community as well. Completely free to those in the military who are who are serving and struggling and just certainly need another level of help beyond what the military is currently providing to you. So, without any further ado, take a listen to this episode. Let me know what you think. Uh, certainly, you can comment inside the app, or we can continue the dis- the discussion over on Facebook. So, here it is. Um, Senior Master Sergeant Michael Daggett is with the Indiana Air National Guard. 
and he is currently the superintendent of recruiting and retention. So he has a firsthand knowledge of the concerns that we have with recruiting members into the military and whether or not they are meeting those standards that we, we need for um, being able to enter the military service. So, Mike. A standard disclosure slide, uh, the Senior Master Sergeant Daggett from the Indiana Air National Guard, currently on active duty, uh, and I'm the CEO and founder of Operation Fat Dag, which is a 501c3 aimed to fill in the gaps that you've just heard, that there are some gaps, and we're going to talk about some of them. Uh, before I begin, if you are currently serving or if you've ever served this nation, please raise your hand. Thank you. I am not a dietitian. I'm not a research analyst. I'm not a fitness expert. Um, I'm an airman, and, and I'm a mess. Uh, 26 years ago, I raised my right hand. I swore to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic, and I would give my life today to keep that promise. Damn it, I'm a good airman. I'll do whatever the military asks of me. I, I, I was uh, in 1997. I was the, the air traffic control maintainer of the year for the entire nation. 2002, I was the rookie recruiter for the entire nation, the best recruiter in the country. I've been given the, the meritorious service medal twice, the Air Force Commendation Medal three times, the Air Force Achievement Medal four times. I've even been given the Air Force Outstanding Military Volunteer Medal. By most accounts, this is a very, very successful career. But deep in the shadows lies a secret, one that we don't talk about in society, one we certainly don't talk about in the military. I have an addiction. I have an addiction to food, and that addiction almost cost me my career. The addiction causes me to struggle with my fitness test no matter how much I want to take it. No matter how much they, they order me to, to go run more, go do I want to do that. But I couldn't find the way to get that. And, and I want to kind of go through a personal story that talks about some of the gaps and where we are because I want nothing more than to comply. I want to be a good airman. I told you, I'd do, I'll do whatever the military asks of me. I remember my very first challenge of being overweight in the military. It was 1997. I joined in 91. I've been six years in. And uh, we, we deployed over to, I was air traffic control maintainer, maintaining radar systems and crazy places, and we deployed and came back. We were, we were in a group of folks for about six months, living in, in tents, really having a, a great time, and we all came back one by one, and we, you know, we all made it back, which was fantastic, and, and the mission had changed. The world had changed, and we were in the main Air, Air National Guard at the time, and, and one by one, the mission moved to New Hampshire. Or, sorry, the mission moved to New Hampshire. One by one, we moved to New Hampshire. Every single one of my friends transferred. I stepped up to transfer, and they said, well, hang on, Mike. You actually can't transfer units because, because part of the recruiting process requires that you meet a height and weight standard. I didn't meet the height and weight standard. So, so the entire unit transfers, I don't get to go. Now, luckily at the time it was 10 or 15 pounds. I lost the 10 or 15 pounds. I ended up transferring, being part of my unit again, finally being able to continue on in my Air Force career. But that was the very first memory I have of being overweight in the military and having it impact my career. 2001, I wanted to be a recruiter. I, I loved everything about being in the military. I thought every single person in the world should be able to experience this. And I want to make sure that they have that same opportunity. So, so I said, you know, I want to go and be a, be a recruiter. I want to go to recruiting school. So I, I submitted an application, and, and they looked at my, the, the career and said, yeah, absolutely. Can you, can you send us a copy of your fitness score so we can validate that? I didn't actually have a current fitness score. Certainly didn't have a passing one. And so they said, well, hey, uh, so I, I looked at the guys on base. I'm like, hey, can you help me out? I need, a fit, I need to go take my fitness, fitness assessment. So we go out and, and we run down through the, through the thing. And I, I do my mile and a half run. I do my push-up, do my sit-ups. And as I'm coming across the mile and a half finish line, they, they click the clock. And I said, what was my time? And, and the, the captain at the time says, you passed. I said, no, no, what was my time? He's like, you passed. I'll tell you today, I didn't pass that test. I know I didn't pass it. I know what it takes to pass the test. I did not pass the test that day. 
But at the time, I didn't care. I wasn't going to argue with him. Certainly wasn't going to go into that detail. So, so I ended up going to recruiting school. I had a, a great career, as you heard. Uh, and I, I had four or five years in recruiting. And I decided I want to do even more. I want to go work at the, Nash, at the Pentagon. I want to work for our nation's capital. I want to change policy so that we can continue to offer these benefits to the great Americans who want to serve our nation. I, so I applied, and same thing. They, they looked at my application, looked at my career, said, man, this is, this is the, you're exactly who we need. Mike, can you send us a copy of your fitness test? <laughs> Damn it. And so same thing. I, I, I was doing whatever I could to pass this test. I got that done. But, but being overweight in the military absolutely limited everything about my military career. There were TDYs, temporary duties, where I had to go to this conference would be a TDY, I couldn't go because I was overweight. I missed out on training opportunities. I missed out on things that, that I just couldn't do strictly because I was overweight. But I wanted to do them. I remember before a test, I went, to, um, I went down to a local spa. And I walked in at 250-some pounds. And I said, can we do this seaweed wrap thing? And I remember laying there, wrapping my body in seaweed, trying to make sure that every ounce of water that was in my midsection would get it so that when they pulled that tape across my test for my next fitness assessment, that I would pass the test. I remember doing that. I remember thinking things like, oh my God, my fitness test is tomorrow morning. You know what, maybe as we leave to go down, if I get to like the second or third stair and kind of miss it, and if I trip and I fall, I don't, I don't really want to get hurt. But at the same point, if my boss sees me, there's no way... He's going to say, well, let's go take a fitness test. I, I would get a, get a kind of a free pass, so to speak. I would think things like, well, okay, well, as, as we drove over to the fitness field, maybe if I pulled out just a little early and hit the car in front of me and got in a car accident. Again, not to hurt anybody, not to hurt myself, but, but to just kind of buy some time so I didn't have to take this fitness test. I remember thinking these things. I would walk into the fitness ass assessment, and I would look for the guy. Our, the Air Force fitness assessment comprises of a tape measure around your midsection for males, a mile and a half run, push-ups and sit-ups. I would walk into the fitness room, and I would look for the guy that I thought would give me the biggest break on the tape. It's a little subjective, depending on how tight you pull it. And I would look for the guy and, and be like, man, and I would jump lines, and I would kind of figure out which guy would give me the biggest break so that I would get that 38 and a half inch waist, sucking it all in as much as I could. I was given a direct order before a test. I, I was talking with an 06 colonel in, in my command. And I said, sir, he said, you got a test in this week, Mike. I said, yes, I do. And uh, he's like, are you going to pass it? I said, yes, sir, I, you know, I, I want to. He goes, Mike, I'm ordering you. This is a direct order. And those were the exact words. This is a direct order. Go buy some Preparation H. Go buy some Saran Wrap. Wrap your, wrap your whole body in this. Put it around you. Go to sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, you will be another inch or two. I looked at him and said, sir, I, I get that, but I'm not going to do that. It wasn't a pretty conversation when an E8 looks at an 06 and says, I'm not going to do that, no matter what the topic is. But I didn't do it. The Air Force has a core value of integrity first. And so that is a core value that, that I believed in 100%. I am not going to cheat this thing. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to go after it. I'm going to get it done. And I owned it. With the exception of I wasn't ready. And so I failed my fitness test for the first time. Now, now, through this entire career, I'd always been able to kind of pass it. I'd always been able to sneak by, whether officially or unofficially, but I'd always had a passing score on record, is the term I'll use. But this is the first time I'd ever failed. And, and I had just moved to Indiana. I was working for the Pentagon, like I said, and then I moved to, to Indiana. My direct report, I report right directly to a one-star general. And, uh, and I failed my fitness test. And, and he looked at me and um, he said, well, Mike, what's, what's happening? And I said, well, I, you know, sir, I, I, didn't, I didn't prepare for my fitness test. I, I just didn't prepare. And he looked at me and he said, he said well, Mike, he goes, that's kind of interesting. No one's ever told me that. He goes, he goes, I hear all the excuses as to why you didn't pass or why people didn't pass. I've never, ever heard anyone actually own it the way that you own it. I said, well, sir, it's 100% me. I, I, I understand the requirement. I just don't know how to get there. I looked right at him, though. I said, I said, boss, if you give me another chance, I promise you. Sir, with everything I got, I promise you I will never 
ever fail another fitness test. I just need one more chance. He looked at me, and of course the regulation allows it. He gives me a six months to go retest. And for those six months, if you can imagine what I did to, to lose enough weight, to get enough shape, I went out and I passed the fitness test. Right? And, and, and I, I passed it. I, I was excited. Off I went to Buffalo Wild Wings to celebrate that success story. <laughs> I mean, it was an incredible accomplishment. I hadn't eaten for six months. It was time to eat. <laughs> you know? And so, so but I, I said, you know, I, I wanted to do this. And so slowly from that day, I couldn't have passed the test the next day. From that moment on, I just, my weight continued to climb. It continued to climb. And, and here I am with a one-star general, my direct commander. And I said, sir, I would never, ever fail a test again. One year later, I come up and it's time to take the test. I wasn't prepared. And, and I kept going through that cycle. So, so I actually didn't, the slide's wrong. I did, actually didn't fail my second PT test. I didn't take it. I hid Every time there was an opportunity to take the test, I was conveniently out. Every time the unit said, hey, we're going to test this week, and oh, yeah, I got that thing, meeting with a high school, got to go do some recruiting work. And so I missed a PT test for like two years. I never even took the test because I wasn't ready. And I knew that I, I wasn't going to go back on my promise. I promised I would never fail, so, so I certainly couldn't go take it knowing that I was going to fail it. The scores that you see there um, are completely made up. The, the commander or the, uh, the captain came in and said, Mike, what, we, we need you to take a test today. I said, the captain, I'm not ready to take the test. He's like, Wait, I didn't get it. He goes, it's been two and a half years. You need to take the test today. I said, sir, do what you got to do. I don't care. I'm not taking it. It's unhealthy for me to take this test. Make up whatever numbers you want. Put them in. I'll sign it. I'll agree to it. I don't care. With the exception of the fact that I actually kind of did care. I just didn't know what to do. So, so I sent an email to help. I, I CC'd uh, two of my generals, a handful of colonels. It was about 20 people. I sent an email. I said, guys, I'm in trouble. I need some help. You know, I, I don't know what, the, I don't know what's causing this. I want to pass this test more than you want me to pass it. Trust me on this. But I don't know how to get this under control. So I sent this email out and, and it was, I mean, I, I poured my heart out. Uh, you know, I, I said, I need some help. And and I got very little response. I went on to military one source and, and I was chatting with a counselor and, and the results were eat less, work, run more. Great. Uh, the email, uh, I found my wingman, he replied to my email. The one person out of the, out of the many people that I sent it to, he sent me an email back and he said, Mike, how, when is your next test? I said, well, I got a test in 68 days. He goes, okay. And that was kind of the end of the conversation. I was like, oh, great. Here's one more, one more person that, that's certainly not going to help me through this process. And, uh, and he said, well, no, Mike, we got this. And so the next morning I woke up and I said, good morning, Mike, day 68, we got this. Good morning, Mike, day 67, we got this. Good morning, Mike, day 65, let's do this. Good morning, Mike, day 64, how are you doing? 63, 62, every single morning when I woke up, there was an email in my inbox from this guy that said, I'm here to help you, whatever it takes to get you there. That was my wingman. That was a guy that understood more than anything else that I needed that personal accountability. I needed someone to kind of walk me through this and kind of hold my hand so I could be reminded of what the goal was. And he did that. And so, as you see on the bottom, in May of 2015, I ended up taking the fitness test and getting a 79.7. It was great. I celebrated with food. I went off to Buffalo Wild Wings and had a great meal that afternoon. I'm telling you, it was fantastic. And I gained the weight all back. I got to 263 pounds. My, uh, the Air Force tape measure, 38 and a half across your midsection is failing. I think I was a 46 at one point. Not even close to within the standard. 2016, I took this, this photo here. Uh, it it kind of, I laugh at it because um, when I actually took the photo, I, I woke up the next morning completely sober. But I woke up the next morning, I'm scrolling through my phone, and I see this picture, I'm like, why would I have taken a picture of this old man? And I'm trying to figure out why I took a picture of him. And I'm like, oh, that's me. So obviously, clearly um, a happy, happy new year. But 
But I, I didn't understand what it took to pass the fitness test. I didn't understand that the lifestyle change that you guys all know, you've heard, you, you, you preach, you talk about, has to be a lifestyle change. I didn't get that. I was doing whatever it could to get through the process. And, and so I, I kind of made this new plan. I needed a new plan. I needed to do something different if I was truly going to change my life. And, and so I, I, in January 2016, after I took that picture, I went to the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning every single day. I was there every single day in January at 5 o'clock in the morning when the doors opened. I went every single day in February, and on March 1st, I hopped on the scale, proud of my accomplishment, no change. Didn't lose a single pound. Two full months at the gym, 5 o'clock in the morning. Now, granted, I wasn't doing much. I was 263 pounds, but I was there every single day giving it my all. Uh, no change. So I, I went back to Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers kind of kind of got me got off this plan, and I started started going back to meetings. And so, you know, for those of you familiar with the program, March 1st, I joined online. I tracked everything I ate on March 1st. March 2nd, I tracked everything I ate. March 3rd, I tracked, like, some of what I ate. <laughs> March 4th, I tracked a little bit of what I ate, you know. March 5th, nothing. 6th, nothing. 7th, nothing. 8th, back into the meeting room to find people who understood me. Now, this is my crisis. We have a crisis. And so all the statistics, all the data, my story doesn't exist in many of them. You know, the, the guard, uh, the, I'm on an active duty order for three years at a time. I pieced together a 20-year career doing this. Uh, but they came to me and said, we're not going to renew your orders. It's just time for you to go. No retirement, no pension. no. It was just, I was at 16.8 years just short of sanctuary. Bye-bye, Mike. And I said, I, I've, got to, I've got to figure this out. So on March 8th, I reached out and I said, I, I've got to do this. So there absolutely is a crisis, crisis in the military. And so uh, Mission Readiness is a group of retired generals that just released a report, Unhealthy and Unprepared, where they cite that, that 31% of the, uh, of the youth of today is disqualified for military service due to being overweight. We know as a recruiter that it's actually 71%. Uh, education and drug use, law violations and drug use, are the number one, two, and obesity being the third factor why people are unable to join the military. Their report re uh, cited that 7.8% of active duty service members are overweight. It doesn't reach far enough into the Garden Reserve to get the data for folks who don't have access to a dietitian. You know, I, I laugh and I say this with no disrespect. I've been in the military for 27 years. The first dietitian I've ever met is sitting right here. I'm a recruiter. I've been recruiting for 17 years. I didn't know the Air Force had dietitians. Uh, the U.S. Navy just, just recognized that there's a problem, and they said we're going to, we're going to grant amnesty to 48,000 sailors, folks who are struggling with their fitness. We're going, to, we're going to kind of give you a break because the Navy understands they need to retain them, so they're now working with them. And when they, when they kind of set their policy, they realize that their policy to revamp this the, for folks who are uh, failing a fitness test reaches into 48,000 sailors. In my, in my career, my observation, I, I go to, I speak to the Army quite often, and I, I teach a class that, of military members who are, who have been, been ordered to go to a life fit camp. Every time I go in the class, the room is 50 people minimum. I do it three or four times a year. I don't leave the state of Indiana. That certainly has to reach across the lines. Um, Many of the folks that I, I, I will talk about in a second, I, I see a lot of folks that, that come to me and say, Mike, how'd you do it? I need some help. What I've noticed is very often it's the higher ranking, it's the senior enlisted, it's the military, it's the senior officers. Do you want to go to a battle with your commander that says help? Right? You want to go into, into battle? So, so, so we have the stigma of you have to be strong, so the higher up in rank you get, the, the less likely you're going to reach out and get help. The Army, as you know, just released their new uh, Army Combat Action Fitness Test, and so, you know, that's going to be a struggle. And, and I 100%, the Chief of Staff just released a statement uh, where he said, if you can't get fit in 24 months, maybe you should hit the road. I 100% agree with that. It, 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 we need strong members of our military to win and fight wars. That's what we're here to do. There is no disputing that. But as a military member that's been asking for help, that for, for 20 years wanted to be fit, that policy kind of irks me in a, in a sense where, where I kind of take it one step further and I say, 
you know, if you can't get in shape for 24 months, then maybe you should, you should hit the road. Right? So if you can't get your financial spending under control in 24 months, maybe you should then hit the road. How about if you can't control your alcohol addiction in 24 months, then maybe, maybe you should hit the road. How about one more? How about if, um, if you, if you can't get your head, in, if you can't get your head right in 24 months, if you're suicidal, if something's going on and you just can't fix it, well then maybe you should hit the road. So what I recognize is there are, there are patterns of things that we have solved as a military, we have solved as a nation, we have solved as a country that we can do this. And so I started up my, my foundation, Operation Fat Dag, uh, and what we do is we work with folks who just want to anonymously help get themselves back in shape. And uh, I want to share it. So now my fitness test 94.1. I, I have zero issue taking a fitness test. <laughs> but it takes a little more than just, than just looking at the problem at a big It takes one step further and saying, I want to hold your hand. I want to get there with you. I want to do something with you about it. And, and it's not just let's get rid of you. Let's help you. Let's work through it. So, so that's where some of the gaps that I've identified. And I, I charge you and challenge you in this room with the tools, with the knowledge, with the education to let's do something a little more than just what we're currently doing and save some careers. So thank you. Thank you, Mike, for your personal story. I think that really hits home. I, I know that when, again, when I was active duty, I talked with many service members who had similar struggles and talked about the techniques they used to be prepared for that day when they had to do the, the weigh-in and the physical fitness test. And possibly some of you who are now working with service members have had similar stories. So it, it definitely is a problem. <laughs> And I tell you, every time, uh, every time I hear that story, I, I, I relive it, and it, it it just brings so many memories back uh, into my into my brain. And so, it's important to capture these stories because what happens along your journey is you get to a much better place where where now things become new, a new normal for you, and it sometimes hard to forget the past. And so it's important to document your journey anyway, whether it's writing it down, whether it's talking into a microphone, whatever it takes to get your story so you can rehear it. So you can relive it without having to actually walk those steps again. You can live it by reading about it. And that keeps you kind of grounded and on track. So I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode. You know, the 2018 is an amazing year. We've had some amazing success. Uh, by you still tuning in, you still listening proves to me that you're, that you're in it. You're in it to win it. 2018 is the best year yet. As 2019 starts to roll on, there's plenty of opportunity to celebrate. And I want to know, what is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on the Wise Advice Podcast link. Send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. You can email in directly at onair at fatdag.com. You can certainly call the show as well. The number is on the app. It's on fatdag.com. But send them in. I want those celebrations. I really want you to be proud of what you're doing. When you're proud of what you're doing, you continue to do it and other people become inspired as well. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.